Okay, good evening. I am Andrew Bing, and I will be the facilitator for tonight's public hearing that the Maryland Department of the Environment, or MDE, will be conducting for the 401 Water Quality Certification, or WQC, for the Maglev Project. On behalf of MDE, I welcome you. The purpose of this hearing is to provide members of the public the opportunity to present views, opinions, and information that will be considered by the MDE in evaluating the 401 WQC for the project. After we hear a brief presentation from MDE and from the applicant, BWRR, I will open the hearing up for public testimony. I will review the ground rules for the hearing after these presentations. I do want to remind everyone that as the hearing facilitator, I am responsible for running the hearing. I will now introduce the representative of MDE who is in attendance for this evening's hearing, Danielle Spendiff, Chief of the Regulatory and Customer Service Division of the Maryland Department of the Environment. At this time, I will turn the proceedings over to Danielle to provide her statement. Let me put this around this way. Good evening. I would like to welcome everyone to the Maryland Department of the Environment's public informational hearing for water quality certification request number 23-WQC-0007, submitted by Baltimore Washington Rapid Rail, or BWRR. My name is Danielle Spendiff, Chief of the Regulatory and Customer Service Division at the Maryland Department of the Environment, which I will refer to as MDE or the department, I am the panelist representing the department at this evening's public informational hearing. Also in attendance with me from the department is Heather Nelson, program manager of the Wetlands and Waterways Protection Program, as well as Denise Clearwater, special projects coordinator with the Wetlands and Waterways Protection Program. I would like to thank everyone for taking time to participate in the public process and the Lakeland Steam Center for providing the hearing location. At this time, I would like to acknowledge any elected officials or their representatives who may be present here this evening. If you are an elected official or representing an elected official, please raise your hand now to be recognized. Okay. It is the responsibility of the department to evaluate requests for water quality certifications or WQCs under section 401 of the Clean Water Act, which requires Maryland as the certifying authority to determine whether the discharge associated with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, known as the Corps, permit application, NAB 2016-01622, complies with the state's water quality standards. The department's authority is found in Subtitle 9 of the Environment Article. Each certification request received through our regulatory program has specific and unique issues and impacts that must be considered with regard to Maryland's water quality standards the department is neither a proponent nor an opponent of any project. The department is conducting this evening's public informational hearing pursuant to Code of Maryland Regulations, or COMAR, 26.08.02.10F2. The purpose of this public informational hearing is for the applicant to present an analysis of impacts that may be associated with the proposed activity. From the hearing participants, the department is seeking your perspectives, views, and concerns about the project, specifically as they relate to the water quality certification request. Although we will not be responding to questions this evening, your public input is essential to making well-informed and thoughtful decisions. I would like to emphasize that the purpose of this public informational hearing is to consider only the WQC request pending before the department there may be concerns related to issues that are beyond the scope of this certification request and hearing. We would like for the hearing to remain focused on the WQC decision and related concerns. It is not necessary to read a statement to make it part of the official record. Written comments will also be accepted and receive the same consideration as any oral statement. In fact, for accuracy, if you have a letter to read into the record, I suggest you also provide us with a copy of the letter when you finish. This public informational hearing is for water quality certification request number 23-WQC-0007, submitted by BWRR 
and received by the department on February 7th, 2023. For dedicated alignment and structures for a high speed superconducting magnetic levitation or SC maglev transportation system between Washington DC and Baltimore, Maryland with an intermediate stop at BWI airport. The SC maglev alignment consists of both below ground and elevated rail on viaduct. The hearing record will remain open for two weeks after the last hearing until 11.59 p.m. on Thursday, November 2nd, 2023. The comments received during the public comment period will become part of the project file and will be considered by the department when rendering a decision on this certification request. The department is obligated to issue with or without conditions, deny or waive certification of this project prior to expiration of the reasonable period of time as determined by the Corps, which is February 7th, 2024. The department's decision and accompanying information will be sent to the interested persons list, the applicant and the Corps and will be published in the Maryland Register. Any person who is aggrieved by the department's decision may appeal by filing a request within 30 days of publication of the WQC decision in accordance with COMAR 26.08.02.10F4. Please contact me directly to be added to the interested persons list. I will now turn the proceedings over to the applicant to provide a brief presentation on their proposed project. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attendance tonight. Thank you, uh, Danielle and Andrew. Uh, my name is Ian Rainey. I'm the Senior Vice President with Baltimore Washington Rapid Rail, or BWRR. Uh, we're the developer of the Baltimore to Washington, D.C. SC Maglev project, and we're the applicant for the WQC. I'll provide a very quick uh, overview of the project as part of this public hearing. Oops, excuse me. Uh, to begin with, I'd like to just um, <clears throat> articulate our company's vision. Uh, it's to connect the major cities and airports uh, on the Northeast Corridor between Washington, D.C. and New York City with a possible future extension to Boston. Uh, we propose doing this using superconducting maglev technology or magnetic levitation technology, SC maglev for short. Um, the first phase of this longer term vision is to connect Washington DC to Baltimore with an intermediate stop at BWI airport. The maglev system travels at 311 miles per hour. That's the operating speed. The top speed is actually even faster than that but at an operating speed of 311 miles per hour, we'll be able to offer service between Washington DC and New York City in under one hour and between Washington DC and Baltimore in just about 15 minutes. So we think this is really transformational, not just for the region, but for the entire Eastern seaboard. To avoid any confusion, uh, I just want to emphasize that the WQC application that BWRR has submitted is only for this first segment between Washington DC and Baltimore. It is not for any other points north of Baltimore. Uh, this map shows the alignment, the station locations, uh, the train set maintenance facility, uh, also known as a, 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 a depot. Um, this is what is contained in the BWRR WQC application. I recognize the resolution on this and the size makes it a little bit difficult to see, but very broadly speaking, I would emphasize just the salient points that leaving Washington DC, the SC Maglev is underground and then it daylights. You can see the underground section is in red. Uh, we're above ground in the green section. It's labeled viaduct there. The SC Maglev is not an at grade system. It's either in tunnel or on viaduct. And then we descend back into tunnel uh, underneath BWI station, and then we proceed to Baltimore. Um, before I leave this slide, let me just emphasize, we get asked quite often why put so much of it in tunnel that's clearly more expensive, and it is. 
uh, this was a decision made very early in the design process because we were very committed, uh, even from those early stages, to minimizing impacts, especially to residential communities. <clears throat> just want to emphasize, and, and this is articulated in much greater detail in the WQC application, uh, but just want to emphasize BWRR is firmly committed uh, to following all federal and state stormwater management guidelines. We will absolutely comply with all MDE regulations for stormwater quality and quantity treatment, and we'll implement environmental site design or ESDs to the maximum extent practicable. We'll also implement erosion and sediment control measures in accordance with MDE practices and timeframes. <clears throat> uh, once again, this is excerpted um, from the WQC, and I hope uh, some of you have had an opportunity to review that document. There's a lot of great info in there. Uh, but just to hit some of the highlights, uh, regarding non-tidal wetlands and waterways, uh, this slide shows the permanent and temporary proposed impacts. Those are, those are captured in the top table uh, of this slide. And of those proposed impacts, um, the impacts to non-tidal wetlands of special concern are captured in the bottom table. Now, regarding Tier 2 impacts, the project will traverse uh, the Patuxent River 1 and Beaver Dam Creek 2 Tier 2 watersheds. Uh, we plan to maintain the condition of waters in these watersheds by avoiding or minimizing impacts. And where impacts cannot be avoided, we'll provide appropriate mitigations. For example, as I mentioned in the earlier slide, from the very beginning, we tried to design this project with keeping as much of the alignment as possible or feasible in tunnel. There are some areas where that's simply not possible. But we did endeavor to maximize the use of tunneling to avoid impacts. Uh, we've also taken care to keep the facilities as compact as possible, including the train set maintenance facility, which after the stations uh, is the largest facility for the project. I'd also point out that there is sufficient opportunity for mitigation in the Patuxent River 1 watershed through the use of reforestation techniques. Uh, in the Beaver Dam Creek 2 watershed, there are more limited opportunities for mitigation. However, there is assimilative capacity. And as we note in the WQC, uh, BWR has located more mitigation than, than is required in the Patuxent River 1 watershed. And we've provided what we think is a very compelling uh, social and economic justification for the unmitigable impacts to the Beaver Dam Creek 2 watershed. I'd like to just conclude by highlighting some of the benefits of the project that are noted in the WQC. Uh, these include significantly reduced emissions resulting in better air quality regionally, significant job creation, and of course transportation improvements without displacement of residential communities. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Ian. I'm going to continue with my remarks and then we're going to get to our testimony. There are multiple ways to comment on the WQC. You can provide oral testimony at this public hearing or send an email or written letter to the MDE Wetlands and Waterways Program. Details on ways to comment can be found if we could advance that screen to the video screen. Right there. All comments received, whether at the hearing through oral testimony or through other methods, will be given equal consideration and comments must be received before 11.59 p.m. on Thursday, November 2, 2023. Today's public hearing is being audio recorded. The official transcript of the public hearing testimony will become part of the project record and will be available for public review on the MDE's project website. Agency representatives and I will be listening to all testimony and will not be answering questions or responding to any comments made during the hearing. Again, the purpose of this public hearing is to allow interested parties to provide public comments on the WQC. My role as the hearing facilitator is to run a professional and orderly public hearing. I understand how important the issues are related to the WQC and I take my role as hearing facilitator seriously. I am committed to providing members of the public an opportunity to provide comments in an organized, fair, 
professional and orderly manner. We look forward to hearing your perspectives on the project on the proposed project. Please be courteous of all speakers and understand that offensive or profane language will not be allowed. The panelists and I are interested in hearing comments about the WQC from all interested individuals. Again, neither I nor the panelists will respond to any question or comments. We are here to listen. Please remember that we are recording the hearing. Speak directly and clearly into the microphone and provide your full name, address, and any organization you may be representing. To ensure all will be heard, there will be a three-minute time limit for public testimony and a five-minute time limit for elected officials and anyone representing a group. The time will start after you introduce yourself. I will remind you when you have 30 seconds remaining so you can begin to wrap up your testimony. As the hearing facilitator, if you are unable to conclude your comments at the end of your time period, I will end your testimony and move on to the next person in the queue. So at this time, I will call on the first person to provide comments. Um, I don't see any elected officials, so we will not be hearing from any elected officials, but if any do show up and want to speak, we will allow time for that. Uh, so we're going to move on to comments from the public. I'm first going to go to those people who are representing a group or an, or an organization. So the first person I'm going to call up is Rhonda Kranz, uh, representing the Maryland Coalition for Responsible Transit. Um, the microphone's right over here. Um, as you come up, um, is, is Ms. Kranz here? Yeah. Oh, okay, getting a drink, great. Um, as you come up, if you could state your name and spell your name, state the organization you're representing and an address, please. And you'll see that we do have a timer on the screen just to help, help you um, as anyone's providing their comments. I have to lower this a little. Yeah. I think it's good. All right. My name is Rhonda Kranz, R H O N D A K R A N Z. I represent the Maryland Coalition for Responsible Transit. Uh, my address is 7008 Woodland Avenue, Tacoma Park, Maryland. Okay. The uh, Maryland Coalition for Responsible Transit is organized for the purpose of encouraging public participation in the development of current and future transit proposals by ensuring they are evaluated for economic viability, social and environmental impact, and community accessibility. The MDE has a critical decision to make on the Baltimore-Washington Rapid Rails Water Quality Certification application. The applicant must provide a high level of specific and detailed processes for topics such as stormwater management and environmental site design, and documentation of what chemicals will be present at the train maintenance facilities, their quantities, and safety precautions. Instead, there are only mentions of using best management practices and the intention to provide more detail in the final environmental impact statement well after the WQC decision. A decision of this magnitude requires a higher level of detail to ensure that the project will not harm our state's waterways and watersheds. I will share three examples of where the application fails to meet these requirements. The application provides vague statements of reassurance with no supporting information. For example, quote, sites have been evaluated and sufficient area is available within our LODs to manage stormwater based on our current level of design, unquote. Yet neither the final environmental site design nor the stormwater management plans have been provided. Instead, BWRR defers these to the final EIS. How can a certification decision be made without details on the essential issue of stormwater treatment? The mitigation approaches are insufficient. For example, the Beaver Dam Creek subwatershed is one of the healthiest in the Anacostia watershed. BWRR has demonstrated insufficient mitigation for tier two catchment watersheds in Beaver Dam Creek. It discloses that 257 acres of forest would be impacted. 
with mitigation occurring in only 55.3 acres. That is a loss of over 200 acres, or 80 percent. This would clearly have a significant impact on water quality. BWRR states, quote, as this document has demonstrated, although SC Maglib will impact Tier 2 watersheds, these impacts will result in significant social and economic benefits that outweigh the current benefit of affected Tier 2 waters, unquote. However, the list of negative impacts on the communities along the SC Maglib alignments is extensive and outweighs the proposed benefits. Especially vulnerable are low-income and black and brown communities. Eighty percent of the parcels that would be impacted by land use conversion, rezoning, and potential property acquisitions are in environmental justice communities. These communities would also face health issues from exposure during construction, and impacts on commercial and social activities. And as uh, Mr. Rainey states that the Maglid would improve, uh, provide transportation improvements without displacement of communities, I would say that these activities do cause displacement of communities, uh, including 24-hour-a-day uh, removal of dirt while the tunnels are being built, and other activities would certainly impact the communities significantly. BWRR proposes that there are no alternatives to provide high-speed rail from Washington, D.C. to Baltimore. Yet Amtrak and the Mark are in the process of producing an inexpensive and comparable high-speed train system. BWRR has not provided significant justification that the need for the SC Maglev outweighs the permanent damage it would cause to Maryland's watersheds and the many communities found within. And also to note that uh, this transportation project would impact the communities, but it provides no transportation benefit to the communities themselves. For these reasons, the Maryland Department of Environment should deny BWRR this essential certificate. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to go to our, our next person, and that's Pamela Oliver, uh, representing the, the Lakeland Community Association Partnership. Take your time. So if you could just state your name and then spell your name, okay. who, you, who you're representing, and an address, please. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Pamela Oliver, P-A-M-E-L-A, -E Oliver, O-L-I-B-R, and I'm, thank you. And I'm representing Lakeland Community Association Partnership, Incorporated. So as I'm understanding about the uh, MATLIF program project, uh, we are for it, and I think it would be a great opportunity for our young people to be involved. There's an opportunity for them to learn uh, the STEM program, math, science, and different things like that. So we have um, STEAM something here, and we have some stuff already. We had the math program, um, the building, robots, and everything. So it would be something different for our young people to get involved with. It would bring job opportunity, and it would be many jobs for different people, especially our young people. And our young people need job opportunity. And there's not too many jobs out here that are gonna help the community like that. And basically, it's hand on. So I think it'd be a great opportunity. Okay, thank you for your comments. Uh, the next person that I'm gonna call up is Angela Smothers uh, with the Mount Winans Community Association. And again, I think you've heard, but if you could just state your name and spell your name, uh, who you're representing, and an address, please. My name is Angela Smothers, A-N-G-E-L-A, -E Smothers, S-M-O-T-H-E-R-S, and I'm here representing Mount Winans Community Associations. Good evening, everyone. I am... Um, I am here to express my support for the upcoming Baltimore-Washington Rapid Rail Water Quality Certification and the project as a whole. 
having had the opportunity to review the information presented recently, I'm truly impressed by the strategy that the Baltimore-Washington Rapid Rail has planned to implement in order to minimize I'm sorry, the environmental benefits of the project while minimizing the potential impact on our precious ecosystem. It is of utmost importance to me that we prioritize a sustainable approach towards development, and I firmly believe that this project aligns with those values. By focusing on the environmental aspects and taking necessary steps to reduce any negative impact, Baltimore Washington Rapid Rail showcased their dedication towards a greener future for our community. I'm confident that this rail project will not only enhance transportation option within our region, but also contribute to the overall well-being of our environment. It is encouraging to witness such a commitment to protect our, and preserve our ecosystem. Thank you for hearing my views. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go now to some members of the public who have also signed up to provide testimony. Uh, the first person is uh, Jay Brannick. I don't have a first name, but Mr. Brannick. And again, if you could state your name and spell your name and provide an address. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Jason Brannock. Uh, it's J like Jason, A like Apple, uh, S like Sam, O like Oscar, N like Nancy. <laughs> Um, I don't, I wasn't, uh, knowing too much about this project, um, but I think the train would provide a lot of, um, opportunity for this community, for the Brooklyn area, this, the, uh, Lakeland area, Cherry Hill, South, the whole South Baltimore area. We need a train like this. Um, a lot of us work in DC, so. It would make our commute uh, a lot easier than having to take the parkway or load up on the mark train. So yeah, we would like to have that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brannock. And again, just so we're having a core reporter, it's B-R-A-N-N-O-C-K, right? Okay. Okay, we're now gonna go to Charlene Collier. And again, if you could state your name and spell your name and provide an address. Good evening. My name is Charlene Collier. My spelling of the name is C-H-A-R-L-E-N-E. -E. The last name is C-O-L-L-I-E-R. And I'm a resident of this community on 2807 East Shire Drive. So I'm one of the persons from the community that's still learning a lot about it. I hear the pros and cons, and um, I think it's still... Um, being worked out and <clears throat> one of the concerns for myself having seen various types of products and buildings and projects that come into cities and they make promises to the people of the community and then mid project or when the project is completed the community that helped you get to that place is now kind of forgotten and we don't know for sure where the accountability comes in and how do we hold you accountable to you keeping your word. I think what Ms. Pam mentioned regarding the STEM program, as well as all of the schools around here, I think it would be a, a great collaboration to pull the students into some of these STEM and engineering projects so they can experience it at, um, you know, the school level, middle school, and begin to learn from a hands-on standpoint to see how they're able to impact the community in a positive way. Their community has nurtured them into becoming an engineer or someone, a mathematician that's going to be able to survey and say, hey, I had a hand and a part of making this transportation system and bringing it to the community. So, you know, that's an investment. When these people become an adults, they, you know, they're invested in the community that they grew up in and that they were um, instrumental in helping it to come into effect. So I think that would be a great um, way to partner with some of the schools to develop a program that is exactly and specifically catering to 
the generation that's going to actually be able to use that train when it's finally built. Um, yeah, and I think that from D.C. to Baltimore to New York, there's this particular side of the eastern seaboard is, you know, important. Everyone travels up and down, and I think that even though the train is probably primarily built to s sustain the business community, but I think that it, this could also be a way to help communities improve as people can quickly access other cities and be able to even just spend a day away and say, hey, New York is a great place, or, oh, I'm going down to D.C. to visit the museum so, so that the everyday common person can know how this train can benefit them as well, not just people that make two and three hundred thousand dollars a year. I need you to wrap up here. I'm finished. Thank you. <laughs> I should have waited. Um, thank you for your comments. Um, next, we're going to hear from Kathy Bartolomeo. Kathy, I think you probably know what you need to do when you get up there, but I'll remind you anyway. If you could state your name and spell your name, and you can lower that if you'd like. Yep. Great. Kathy Bartolomeo. B-A-R-T-O-L-O-M-E-O. -O -O. And do I address 15 Laurel Hill Road, Unit R, Greenbelt. I live in Laurels, Maryland City for 39 years and presently live in Greenbelt. I'm concerned about the following. The West Side proposal for BWR that would impact Maryland City and Laurel. The two-lane Brockbridge Road used for trucking to direct spoils and digging and tunneling and a train maintenance facility. The impact to the Patuxent stream and waters would be huge. In the past, Patuxent overflowed onto Brockbridge Road with more, and with more SE Maglev construction, there will be again flooding. The proposal of BWR that would take away our Greenbelt Observatory and change the road on Northway, which is next to our trails and streams connected to the Tier 2 River Dam Creek. How can diesel fumes and oil be averted in this delicate area in the heart of our lungs of the Chesapeake? The Beltsville Agricultural Research Center is federal land. Why give federal land to BWR, a private corporation? If the East 198 and 32 South Pathway is chosen, um, then the woods are impacted too in streams. These proposals would be impactful to the communities that travel these roads, producing more waiting and confusion with redirections, damaging roads with heavy trucks, more emissions in the air and on ground and in the water. None of the modeling done so far would be adequate to produce, protect the future of the impact to our wetlands and streams as our climate changes each year. With SC Maglev, we would be covering acres and acres of land for train yards and more. So changes to the flow patterns can neither be done easily nor done during one modeling calculation. Professor Dr. Alves from University of Maryland has created good environmental models that reveal that we do not have enough stormwater management modeling to know the impact as we pave our lands and remove trees and add pipes for various needs. SC Maglev requires a great deal of energy. Where will the greater amount of energy come from? We most likely will be adding more greenhouse gas emissions due to the use of electricity produced by natural gas, which we all know is not clean energy. So-called benefits from the job will not compete with our loss of forests and impacts during construction. Many jobs are available now that would be doing much less harm. Damage to the environment needs to be added to this project. As with the pipelines, American Indian Winona Duke replied to Enbridge, who asked for trust in the mitigation. We have no more trust. You have about 30 seconds. We, it makes no sense to pursue this project. Much time and thousands of dollars have been spent to push this project to say, take 10 minutes off travel time from Baltimore to DC. Even in New York will be more ten, uh, years of turmoil. Who will benefit? The millions taken up of will be by the developers and contractors, not our children. Only when the last tree has died and the last river has been poisoned and the last fish has been caught will we realize that we cannot eat money, Chief Seattle. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, we're gonna hear from Veronica Crosby. So again, if you could state your name and then spell your name and provide your address, please. My name is Veronica Crosby, V-E-R-O-N-I-C-A, Crosby, C-R-O-S-B-Y. I'm a resident here in Lakeland, uh, 2909 Mallview Road, Baltimore. 
and I am uh, in favor of the um, BWRR and Maglev project. Um, the reason that I'm in favor of it is because it will help to connect um, especially the South Baltimore area um, to other parts going as far as New York. Um, I think that it's going to be beneficial for our young people who reside here so that they'll have more opportunities for employment, um, also transportation for those who are already employed in some of these uh, places and spaces. Um, and I do believe that they will take the best care that they can of um, working with and around the ecosystem to do that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to let anyone know who had prepared remarks that if you want to submit those, uh, you can. Um, and I also want to let people know that at this point, we don't have anyone else who has signed up to uh, make public comments. So if anyone is in the room who would like to provide public testimony, let me know. Uh, we'll get you signed up quickly and we will have you uh, come up and make comments. Um, if I don't see anyone who wants to do that, what we're going to do is go into recess. Um, right now it is 735. So what I'll probably do is wait about 10 minutes so 7.45 and come back and provide an update. Uh, but right now, since I don't see anyone else who wishes to make comments, we're going to go into recess for 10 minutes. If someone does show up who wants to provide testimony within that 10 minutes, we'll come back and take that. But if not, we'll come back at 7.45 and I'll provide an update. So for right now, we are in recess.
You're good. Okay, everyone, I'm going to come back on the record. It is now 7.45 p.m. Uh, no one else has indicated a desire to testify. Um, so, uh, nor has anyone else uh, shown up, but we have no, uh, no one else who wants to testify. So I'm just going to let everyone know what we're going to do. Uh, we are going to stay for another 15 minutes to see if anyone else will um, show up who wants to provide testimony. Um, and at any time during the next 15 minutes, we will take that testimony. Um, at 8 o'clock, uh, unless uh, we see some kind of a change in the situation, we are going to uh, wrap up the hearing and I will provide some final comments and then turn it over uh, to Ms. Spendiff to close the hearing. But for right now, we're going to remain in recess and we're going to wait to see if we uh, have anyone else who shows up to provide testimony. So again, I'll come back on the record right away if we have someone. If not, I'll come back at 8 o'clock and provide an update and close this out. So thank you. We remain in recess.
Okay, I'm going to come. I'm going to come back on the record. We do have someone who has indicated um, an interest in providing public comments. So again, out of respect for this person, if uh, we could all. Okay. Um, so I'm going to call this person up. We are back on the record. Uh, so uh, Willie Grant, who is the president of the Lakeland Community Association. Mr. Grant, um, the microphone's over there. Um, and as you come up to the microphone, if again, you could just state your name and spell your name. State what organization you're representing and an address, please. And you will have five minutes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. My name is Willie Grant. Um, but W I L O I E Grant, last name G R A A N T. Um, I'm Lakewood Community Associates President. Um, I believe that this project of Maglane will be a great benefit to the community for Lakeland. Um, it would bring a lot of opportunities for people in the community, especially our youth. Um, we'll give them job opportunities, and also that um, also that time is changing. So this would be a great development to our communities, um, and a lot of change will be happening in the community as well. So I, I am a supporter of this project. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Okay, thank you. Appreciate your comments. And again, um, right now, I don't have anyone else who has indicated they'd like to uh, provide comments. Again, if you would like to, you still have time. What we're gonna do, because we just had someone else who came and wanted to provide comments, we're gonna extend our time. So we're gonna stay, I'm gonna come back on the record at 8.10, uh, so in 10 minutes, and we'll see if in that time, uh, anyone else has, does, uh, decided that they wanted to provide comments. Um, I'm not gonna go into recess yet, I'm just gonna pause for one second, so hold on. Okay, we do have someone else who wants to make comments, but we're going to just wait a minute for me to get his information, and then I'll call him up. Okay, so the next person who's gonna provide comments is David Castro, who's the director of the community school at Lakeland. So Mr. Castro, if you could just state your name and then spell your name. Yes, uh, David Castro, D-A-V-I-D-C-A-S-T-R-O. Um, and who again you're representing? I am the community school director for Lakeland and who represents not only the school, but also the greater community of Lakeland as well through work through the community school initiative. And um, although I am not a resident of Lakeland, I work here, I've gotten to know many people, and I would like to say that I think it's important that the residents of Lakeland take this time to really think about the lessons from different development projects. I'm not gonna state that I'm for or against this project. I think it's an interesting opportunity to learn about some of the failures. Um, I used to use uh, commute through the metro to Silver Spring down to DC. The Paul, the Paul S. Sarbanes Transit Center was a giant failure and of a project and how much that ballooned in costs. And I think knowing who picks up these costs and what happens in these moments when things don't go according to plan is a very important thing to keep in mind when we are thinking about how something's gonna be done and who picks up the tab and who's responsible, what kind of money's going into it. And um, that's something that really the residents and the neighboring communities and authorities should be thinking about. I'm also a physical science major, so I always think about the environmental impact, and I think it's important that we keep that in mind as well. So for me, really, this is just an interesting opportunity to learn about lessons like the intercounty community connector. Um, we have lessons from 
local areas in Maryland that we can learn from and see what were some of the challenges, what maybe were issues that ended up not being such a big deal after all. But we have a unique area here that has history, particularly with some of the originally proposed parts of the line in terms of through Westport and what some of the issue was that Westport particularly had against this. So I just urge that people have a little bit of time to reflect and look and do the, not through the justice report, but through neighboring projects. There's plenty of research and history there, but also thinking about the history and areas around here that could be potentially impacted, how much time is going to be impacted, sometimes in the amount of length of these projects that passes, and especially if any delays occurs, the technology continues to advance, where it then becomes about pace in the time it gets done. So considering the ratio of how much cost may be involved, I think it's important to keep that in mind. But for myself, I'm open to the idea. I'm all about innovation, especially the way it can incorporate the science behind it. As a physical science student, I'm in high school. In my physics AP class, I made a maglev model to learn about how this train functions and works. So I'm a little bit excited about the idea of it coming to the US. But there's also a history there in terms of some of the issues that were run into other parts of the world. So I have a very open mind about this, but I'm moving with caution just because I think with anything, there's devils always in the details and there's still time to kind of continue to learn a little bit more about some of the things that I've been heard and raised that are still lacking in some of the best practices and management of impact. So um, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for your comments. So we don't have anyone else who has um, signed up to uh, provide comments. So right now it is 8.04. Uh, we are going to go into recess. We will stay till 8.15. And I, again, same rules. If someone decides they want to make a comment, we'll come back on um, at any time between now and 8.15. And if we do get to 8.15 and don't see anyone else who has an interest, um, I will wrap up and turn it over uh, to Ms. Spendiff to close out the hearing. I, I do want to let people know, I mean, this is a public hearing. You're welcome to stay, but if you don't have to stay, so it's up to you. So don't feel like you're, you're required that you have to remain till the very end. But we will be here for at least another 10 minutes, and I'll come back on at 8.15 and provide an update. Uh, so for right now, we are in recess.
Okay, it is 8.15. Um, we have not had anyone else who has indicated a desire to provide testimony. Um, and again, if, if anyone is here who would like to, please raise your hand. We want to make sure we provide every opportunity for someone to make comments if that's what they would like to do. But I don't see anyone who would like to make comments. So what we're going to do now, it is 8.15, as I said. We are going to wrap up. And I would like to thank everyone for participating in tonight's public hearing. Uh, it is now 8.15, and we do not have any other people who have indicated an interest in providing comments. As a reminder, the public comment period will remain open until November 2nd, 2023. And we do have two more hearings. Uh, we have an in-person hearing on Tuesday of next week and a virtual hearing on Thursday of next week. So there still are opportunities uh, for the public to provide testimony. At this point, I will turn things over to Danielle Spendiff to close out the hearing. On behalf of the Maryland Department of the Environment, your interest in this project and attendance at this evening's hearing is appreciated. This hearing is now adjourned. Thank you all for attending and have a good evening.